Uh, good day and welcome back. Today I'm just going to do a very short video on dim bulb testers. I've got a fair bit on at the moment and uh, I'll just use this as a filler to uh, give me some breathing space. I get quite a few questions about my dim bulb control. Did I buy it? Did I make it? Well I'll tell you now I made it. This is a generational thing. It started off very simply and this is my first one here and it consists of a plug, a light bulb in a socket and an outlet. Aussie outlets have a switch generally, uh, same as uh, Europe and uh, the UK I think. As you can see in the diagram here, the power supply is on the left, then a switch and an incandescent light bulb. It must be incandescent, it can't use anything else. And then a power outlet. And of course our radio or item under test. Now power is supplied to the switch, through the bulb, to the outlet and returns to the neutral or common power supply point. When the switch is set to on, the light should come on dim and then fade away. If the light comes on more than dim then you've got a short so you need to turn it off and investigate. The light bulb filament when it's cold has a very low resistance. You put some current flow through it and it heats the filament. Uh, the filament resistance increases and limits the current flow and turns the current flow into heat and light. So we use that feature to protect the radio or whatever you've got plugged in here from short circuits or partial shorts. So if you've got a dead short in your radio this light will come on full intensity straight away. The amount of current left to go through your radio is virtually none and your radio is protected. If it's got a partial short, it'll come on bright but not full brightness. And once again, it'll limit the current through the partial short in your radio and protect it. Now, I'm using a 60 watt globe at the moment in mine and that's about right. 75 might be a bit better. Uh, I don't have a 75 so that's why I'm using a 60. It protects the radio and still allows it to work if the radio is in a reasonable condition it will work. If it doesn't work, then there's something wrong with the radio with this 60 watt bulb in it. Something that is important, particularly if you're using a hot chassis sets, is to keep the polarity correct between your plug here and the outlet. Don't mix them up. You'll end up having the active on the chassis on your radio if you do, and you don't want that. I use an isolation transformer as well, and particularly on a hot chassis set, I wouldn't touch it without an isolation transformer. Just to get back to this box here, it looks fancy, but there's really nothing to it. It's got a power on off switch, a uh, dim bulb or full power switch, and then a master switch to let that uh, power get out to the outlet. Uh, now I'll put a guarded switch on there so I can just flick it close if I need to. Now the meter I got from Ebo, I think this goes to five or 600 volts. There is another one that only goes to 250, which would be fine for uh, North America. Uh, but I just wanted a bit more headroom, so I went for the higher voltage model. Uh, but this works very well, and uh, it'll work down to about 70 odd volts, so uh, yeah, it works good. And of course it gives you your voltage, wattage, and your current draw, so uh, uh, it's got everything on there. It gives you a power factor too, if you want to use that. Now I've gone a bit fancy and put some indicator lights on there. Um, don't need them, but it uh, looks nice. The box itself is a flat aluminium panel, and I've just drilled it, cut it out uh, to suit the switches and the display here. And the box outside is a, a timber box and it's just screwed to it. The front decal I just printed on my laser printer and uh, painted it with some clear lacquer and glued it on the front. I'll just take the screws out, we'll have a look inside. I'll turn it off first. There it is there, it's a simple wooden box with a back in it and I've just painted it black. Here's the aluminium plate I used and just cut holes in it to mount all the uh, switches and whatnot. So there's the indicator lights, three switches and the back of the uh, indicator panel. Now this wire here is carrying the current to the uh, outlet switch here. Uh, so it's got an inductive ring there just to measure the current flow. That's the power supply into the meter there. So it gets its voltage reading from there. Uh, the wattage would be calculated inside the unit from the amps and the voltage. And that's it. No, nothing to it really. I'll plug the little Fleetwood radio in here. I'll turn it on. The sequence of events is I'll put power on here. The radio will draw a large amount of current initially. Uh, it has to charge the filter capacitors, uh, current starts flowing through the heaters and they build up resistance as they heat up of course so the current will drop off. The bulb will come on brightish then dim down. As the radio starts using uh, current as it heats up uh, the bulb will come on a little bit brighter again. I've got it on dim bulb, I'll switch it on, the light will go bright, dim off and if we wait till it heats up uh, it will start to come on bright again. I want to say bright, it's not bright, it's brightish. And there it is.
And when we're happy with uh, what's going on, I can just go straight to full power. So that's what you'd expect to see with a normal radio. If that light was to come on bright, just flash it off. You've got plenty of time. Uh, it's not going to, you know, the bulb will protect it. Just to see what the current flow is through that globe, and I believe 60 watt globe is around about the 250 mark in milliamps. Uh, I've got my tester on dim bulb. I've plugged in the leads for my multimeter into the outlet that I usually use for the uh, dim bulb tester. I've got my multimeter set on AC milliamps. I'll put the dim bulb on, it'll go bright, and we should read, yeah, there we go, so 240 odd uh, milliamps there. Now, if you didn't have the dim bulb in here, you would get as much um, amperage through that as the uh, system could deliver. So uh, you'd blow the fuse there, but uh, how much damage is done before the fuse blows. So these are great insurance. I think that's covered most of it. Don't forget, uh, you must use incandescent lamps. You can't use anything else. This would have benefited by having a bypass switch here, so I could have bypassed the light uh, to go onto full power. Now, you could also use a number of lamps and use switches to put them in and out of the circuit, almost like a variac, I suppose. You can also use these meters as well if you want to. Just plug it in your socket there. Uh, they're fairly cheap on eBay. Uh, you do have to uh, cycle between the various readings. That's the only thing. Uh, but that's uh, a cheap option. I've drawn up the schematic for this unit here. Um, I'll put it on the screen now, and I'll put a link down in the description, and you should be able to download it. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope this was of some use to you. I should be back in a couple of weeks with my next radio adventure. <laughs>